Alright, I'm making this video to show you why Esco is the absolute most ridiculous character in The Witcher 3 ever. Now I'm done with April Fools for now, quite a few people fell for it by the way, but we're back to normal videos for the time being. So this one is actually about a few notable interactions with Esco in The Witcher 3, which for one reason or another you may have missed. Fuck yeah! Summon the bitches! I've already made more than a hundred such videos, so if you haven't watched some of them, feel free to check the full playlist in the description, and without further lollygagging, let's begin. First, we have a couple of things related to losing the race to Kaer Morin against Tesco. You're a lame sow yourself. Those of you who have been playing the game since launch have likely seen the first part, because back then there was a bug which caused Roach to immediately stop in her tracks whenever you tried crossing a bridge. And since there is a bridge right before the finish line in this case, it used to be quite tricky to win, especially if you did not have a very good saddle and couldn't get a significant head start. That's it, Roach! So, in case you lose the race, one of the dialogue options allows you to offer Eskel a reward for his victory. Alright, name your prize. Earned it. Mmm. Had this craving for my Hackerman spirit a while now. Nothing burns quite like it. Now if you happen to have it at this point, you can give it to him, which results in one of the most heartfelt exchanges with Esco, more so for book readers, I suppose. As luck would have it, got a bottle with me. Here. Damn. Must have read my mind long range. Nah, enjoy a swig from time to time, just like you. Right. Vesemir used to say he couldn't tell us apart. Like brothers. Two drops of water. A long time ago, that. Thanks. This is a reference to the Blood of Elves book, where it was said that Eskel and Geralt resembled one another like brothers. That is, if you discount the massive scars on Eskel's face and the rather big difference in hairstyles. Now, here The Witcher 3 picks up on it by saying that this was the case back when Eskel and Geralt were still training with Vesemir. And in fact, even Netflix got that right. In The Nightmare of the Wolf, we see that the child versions of Geralt and Esco do indeed resemble one another quite a lot. So, before they decided to have him turn into a Leshen and die, Netflix did a pretty good job at portraying Esco. Go to bed. Now. But back to the game, the second curious bit here, of which I learned only recently from one of my loyal viewers, I'm sure you've seen the name in other videos, is that if you don't have the spirit with you at this point, you can still give it to Esco later. Now you might say that's pretty obvious based on the dialogue. Have a bottle for you next time we meet. Promise. But I wouldn't say so because you don't actually have the option to give it to him at the next opportunity. That being the conversation about the catacan where Geralt is eating an apple next to the rotting corpse. No thanks. You cut. I'll grab a bite to eat. You cannot actually bring up the race at this point and neither is Eskel available for it after the cutscene. Yes, Wolf. Yes, Wolf. Yes, Wolf. So it's not quite as obvious as it seems. However, a dialogue option for it does present itself after lifting the curse from Uma. Esco. Hmm? Got the reward I promised you. My Hackman spirit. Ha! <laughs> Lambert claimed you'd forgot. Thanks, brother. Did everything to deserve it. Well, Scorpion did. But I'm not about to ply your horse with vodka. It's quite brief, but what I like about it is that the delay isn't a bug or something that's not properly thought out. This is because you can actually finish Eskel's quest while Lambert is still away, and therefore the part where he brings up Lambert would not make sense. <laughs> Lambert claimed you'd forgot. So it must have been intentionally delayed until after a time where Eskel and Lambert could have actually talked about it. So I love that. And just in case you haven't heard the other piece of dialogue, let me play it for you real quick. Happen on any interesting contracts lately? Eh, not lately. But about half a year back I slew a manticore in Creighton in a forest. Quick son of a bitch, that one. Jumped out of the undergrowth so fast my medallion didn't have time to give me so much as one twitch. Won't show you the scar. Too big a boy for that. 
Get a nice sum at least? <laughs> Not one copper. Showed the beast's head to the elder in the nearest village. He swore on all the gods it was the first he'd heard of the monster. What about you? Besides the griffin, same old, same old. Neckers, ghouls, drowners. Haven't seen a manticore in... must be a year now. See ya. Okay, now let's go back a bit, because I would like to show you another couple of interactions you may have missed in the beginning of his quest. The first one is something I actually hear more often than the default version, because I normally rush through the Care Morin section of the game to test other things, but here it is. There is a difference in the first conversation with Esco based on whether you tracked down his goat... Ugh, stench which is the default scenario, that's where the quest objective is leading you, or you actually managed to find him in the bushes. Supposed to be forktail bait. <laughs> Guess it works for witchers as well. See your memories back in full, and sharp as ever in spite of your years. You're as old as I am, wise guy. Don't let the gray hair fool you. See your memories back in full, and sharp as ever in spite of your years. Whereas you're getting hard of hearing in your old age. Squawking grouse could have snuck up on you. Nah, heard you panting from three miles away. Just didn't want to give up that vantage point. Good to finally see you again. Then, immediately afterwards, there is a brief and rather funny exchange which, for some reason, can take quite a long time to trigger. At least on PC. And I imagine that under most circumstances, you will finish the first phase of the fight before you're actually able to hear it. But if you take your time with the fork tail, Geralt and Eskel will start criticizing each other's fighting moves. You're slow dodging. Need to run you through the gauntlet. Yeah? Your parries are shit. Focus on improving that, smartass. Similarly, there are a few more exchanges between Geralt and Eskel afterwards, which you can easily mess up if you're not careful. For example, if you chase after the Forktail too quickly, or if you start investigating the tracks too soon, some of these small conversations might either not play or get interrupted halfway through. So basically what you have to do is walk slowly, and whenever Eskel starts talking, just wait for him to finish and carry on. Foul overgrown reptiles. Hate it when they do that. Might have saved us some trouble, let us kill it now. Mm-hmm, then maybe gut itself, run a spit down its throat and out its ass? Damn straight. Doubt the beast that well-mannered, though. We gotta climb. Bit of exercise will do you good. Huh? Well, you've rounded out a bit. Still got some of last winter's blubber on you. Speak for yourself, funny bunny. Not scared to leave the horse down below? Forktail could decide to have at him. <laughs> Scorpion's a warhorse, a purebred Kedwenny. He'll be fine. Have I told you how I got him? No, don't think so. Saved this lost knight once. You know, woods, dark, wolves, the standard. Told him, give me what you find at home and all that. No kid this time, but his mare had just foaled. Eskel and Scorpion, bound by fate. An enchanting tale. Mock me all you want. You're just jealous. The old hand she cackled. She cackled on the fence. The old hen she cackled. And she ain't cackled since. What's that song? Some old hill folk tune. Perfect for hiking. My mom sang it to me. You remember her? Just that silly song. Nothing else. And one thing that remains a mystery to me still is this line. Damn it! It's taking off! Hit the wings! It seems like there should have been an alternative scenario where you disable the wings of the Forktail and it's never able to fly away, but sadly as much as I tried shooting at its wings, nothing happens. Please let me know if any of you has managed to trigger something here. And before I end the video, I would like to take a moment and talk about something in relation to The Witcher 4, or the next Witcher game, whatever it's called. I have seen a piece of information popping here and there since the announcement, it was even being tweeted by major websites, that apparently the next game will be about Lambert and Kira setting up a new Witcher school. Which is most certainly based on a piece of fan fiction, which I certainly doubt will turn out to be true. I mean, who knows, the developers might embrace it, 
but given that both Lambert and Kira can die in The Witcher 3, I think it's rather unlikely. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because while recording this video, I stumbled upon a line by Eskel, which I had forgotten about, and it actually made me think that he could possibly be one of the people behind the setting up of a new Witcher school. It's part of the scene where he examines the catacan. It turns out that the ultimate reason for doing all of this is so that he can find a way to determine a vampire's power level, essentially, only from tracking it down. This would prevent witchers from running into incredibly powerful vampires unprepared. It'd be nice to figure out a way to determine a catacan's age based on its tracks. Avoid running across one like this unprepared. It would, I agree. But later, see Eskel. So, in a way, he seems to be trying to expand the Witcher's knowledge of vampires through his experiments. Combine that with the fact that he always leaves Kaer Morhen in the end of the game, and that he always survives, I suppose it wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that he could be one of the founders of a potential new school of Witchers. Now, this is pure speculation, of course, it's very likely not going to be the case, but it's just something that crossed my mind. Alright, and with that, I believe we're done. Tell me what you thought of everything I talked about, and whether you've got any more curious things to say about Eskel. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support, and until the next video, which will likely be about Lambert and his curious interactions at Kaer Morhen, stay tuned and be good. Can we talk? What about? Holding up all right. Love questions like that. Am I holding up? What? My dick? This is shit, Geralt, and you know it. I knew the old man couldn't live forever.